Good morning, everybody. We party from across the shock, and uh, I've been looking forward to doing this wee video more so because of this knife at the top here, which I'll get to at the very end. Uh, I've just got this, but I, I decided this was the right time to do uh, Paddy's view on case knives. Now, I'm not American, so this is a view from somebody that's outside of America, and I feel as if I can give this, I've given it some thought in the past of what I think of case knives. You know I'm a GEC lover. I have about eight case knives, so I don't have, I don't have a huge collection. But I feel as if I've got enough to say now because of the collection that I've got. It's a, you know, I, I, this is a selection that, that goes from the very basic to the most expensive that I have ever bought for a case knife. It's up with the high GEC ant knives and why I bought it. So I'm going to start with case as I know them. Most of the time, uh, case knives, everybody knows the yellow Daryl and Handel case knife. This happens to be the most successful knife in their brand, the Trapper. And this is unadulterated with, uh, or usually unadulterated with um, ads and promotions. This is just a very basic Daryl and Handel, very affordable pocket knife. If you want a work knife, this is a great knife. If you don't like the blade shape, it's not for you. There's plenty of other ones to choose from. But the fit and finish on this, I can't fault. And I can't fault, just genuinely cannot fault as a pocket knife. It is built really well. The centering is good. The spring and the cam tang is good. So I can't fault this case knife for any part of it. And, and I, I suppose the, the, uh, get the big uh, elephant out of the room. All I ever hear now is case or crap. And I'll have to say that in some, some periods during my collection, I got a lot of rubbish case knives. Not a lot. I got a few. So the, it put me off collecting case just for that few. But as time goes by and you realise what case do, case knock out thousands upon thousands upon thousands of knives every year for the general public mostly. Not so much is made for the collectors. Now, the case collectors are fanatical, much as the GEC collectors are fanatical. So we have to rule them out of this conversation. This is just about your everyday man buying a pocket knife that's going to be great value. Now, case knives have been known and do let some shoddy workmanship out of the factory. Granted. But if you take the thousands upon thousands of knives and you only have to go and, and, and read up a little bit in case to see how many they actually do push out, that yes, they're sometimes just Quite a few will slip through the, the net. But your average man on the street out there doesn't really check knives the way we do. We, nobody really gets them up and looks to see if there's the slightest wee crack and what's wrong with this and this is not, you know, that pin sticking up a bit. The average man on the street just wants a knife to use and go and cut stuff. We as reviewers or you and me as collectors are really, really pernickety on a pen knife. As long as the blade isn't wobbling, moving up and down, and the knife is solid, it's a knife. It's a pen knife, which is what the majority of the people out there in the world want. Now, should they let them through their, their, their checking procedure? No, but that's life. When you're mass producing something, some shoddy ones will ship. Now, case will replace or fix. That's the good part about it. You know, they they're genuinely will. It might take a bit of time to send it off, get it back, because they're dealing in such large quantities. But I, I believe I've got the foolproof way for somebody like us as a reviewer or a collector. How do you buy case knives knowing you're going to get a good knife? Now, I have eight case knives. I've got these here in order, in ascending order of... Their their value, their their cost to buy, but also their fit and finish. This is the basic one. 
and this model that I've got is perfect. This was sent by a friend to me. He picked it. So he picked a really nice one. And that's where I think you have to be, even as a reviewer, don't just take the first case that comes through your door because you're not really given a true representation of the company. They're a company that mass produces knives at a price that, especially in the Daryl hand, most people can afford. As you move up, you'll want a wee bit more. But my, my saying to you is that the ones that I have got for myself, I have picked. I have picked because I've seen the pictures of them. I have picked because I've asked whatever shop I was buying from over here in the UK, could you check a knife for me? I want to know that the fit and finish is good, blade centering's okay. As long as it's not rubbing, I can cope with that. But out of the ones, and I've, when I've bought on uh, my slip joint channels, people always show pictures of the knives they're shelling, selling. Or you can trust the person you're buying from. And trust is something that's just gained through dealing with somebody over and over again which we'll talk about more so in this knife. But, so I'm going to start, this is the Daryl Lehan. That's the cheapest version and they come in stainless steel and they also come in carbon steel. Now, this is just going up to your average case. This is just a, a bone case. Beautiful bone on this. Absolutely stunning. Great jigging. This one, cam tang again. No half stops on most of case knives. Um. Now, I'm saying most, a lot of them do, but most have not got half stops. They have a cam tang and they have the cam tang really down to a fine art. It is usually really, really good. But I bought this for a friend off the uh, one of my slip joint groups. He showed me a picture of it. This was used. This is in carbon fiber. Look at the fit and finish on that. I mean, you, you, I can't find, you know, for the night, the price that you're paying for this, especially on the second hand market, it's just. And it's common sense that this is this is a great buy because it's a very good knife and it's carbon and I wanted to throw down the carbon along with the stainless. Their stainless is 440A, but it's it's heat treated. And when 440A is heat treated well, it's a really good knife steel for a pen knife. And that's why Case uses it. So you got your basic and then you step up to the nicer bone handles, wood handle, whatever case do. There's not a lot of wood handles, but and then they go up into their higher end, which is their double X series, which is their tested. These tend to be better. Uh, they're, they're checked better for fit and finish. This is a Tony Bowes one. And this is where case now jumps up in my estimation. Most of the Tony Bowes knives that I have and I have three now. I'm going to show you two. This is one on the... Right, let me just see. There you are. When you see the TB before it, this means that it's a Tony Bowes pattern that he brought or took to, to uh, Case. And he's been working with Case since 1999. He just passed away last year, um, which is why I bought this knife at the top here. But this one I bought, this, this is just a stunning... This is some of the nicest. I'm going to bring it down. This is some of the nicest stag I have on any knife at any price. It is absolutely gorgeous. The fit and finish, everything about this knife is wonderful. It's got a half stop, more their their double X. It's centered right up the middle. You can't fault this. It's just a little sway back jack. It's a small little fifth pocket knife. But as a pen knife, this will do me most of my day. I don't need anything bigger than this. I'll carry something bigger, but I don't need it. I can get most of my day's work done with this. It's just a stunning little knife for the price. And and all these here are under a hundred pound. Starting down here, these are about 30 odd pound, I believe. Depending on what size you get and whatever. Um, but, you know, this is under a hundred pound. That, I mean, that, that is beautiful fit and finish. And beautiful piece of stag for that price. Now, do you have to be a collector to, to spend that much on a small knife like this? Probably in all sense, yeah. Or you just have the, the amount of money you can afford to buy something that looks nicer than a basic Daryl. So there's plenty of reasons for having it. But as a collector, this is just a gorgeous piece that represents the brand really well. And I believe a lot of that uh, this higher end spec 
is because Tony Bowes has put his name to it. And most of the knives that Tony Bowes put his name to had to be good quality because that was Tony Bowes made his name on quality. So when he passed away last year, I went out and I bought this one. This one has Tony's signature on the blade there. And it'll also on the tang, on the number, let me just get it. You'll see the TB before the number. There you are. USA Stainless Steel. So I bought this. It's a side belly. It's my only side belly. But in hand, Tony Bowes had a saying that there should be no corners on knives. Now that sounds a really simple thing. But on his own knives, especially his customs, there's no corners. Everything is rounded off. Everything. There's no square handles so that when you hold it, there's nothing to stick in you. That was his mantra. No corners on pen knives. I think that's wonderful because a lot of the square end ones, they will stick in the corner of your hand. True, or, you know, maybe you don't feel that, but they can do. A lot of the square end knives will stick in your hand. So no corners is one of his mantras, which I think is brilliant. There's that knife. Beautiful, fit and finish. Absolutely stunning. Really, really lovely knife in ebony. It's just beautiful. The propeller shield, everything about this knife says class. There's not a gap in it. There's nothing. So they can be fine. You just have to be a little bit more, because it's a mass produced company, you have to be careful where you're buying from and who you're buying from. And I always say that if you either don't get it in hand, make sure you're buying from a reputable place that you know whoever you're buying from can send you pictures of it or tell you that it's perfect. Sometimes people tell fibs, <laughs> but you build up trust of people over the years of collecting. It's not something that happens overnight. So the main part of this video is I'm going to move these. Sorry, I'm going to move these to the side now. I'm just going to move these over here to the side. These two here are Tony Bowes. And then I'm going to leave them there. They're Tony Bowes. And that this was a shot show. Once a year at shot show. He makes a different pattern knife and he'll sign it. So that's what that is. This is just your everyday Tony Bowes that you can buy at any time. These you can't. There's a limited number. Once they're gone, they're gone. Now, I think they make them in a fairly big number, but it's a lovely, lovely pocket knife. This is Case's high end and this is Tony Bowes Select Knives. He only made one a year with Case and he spent so much of his own time at Case teaching the high-end, already high-end makers how to perfect his knife because these were his knives that he brought back into production again. It comes in a beautiful suede case. Absolutely stunning. Now, I believe they come with a certificate of authenticity. I bought this in the second-hand market of someone in my slip joint group who I totally trust i seen one picture of it. I didn't even have to see round the knife because I trusted that person because I dealt with them before. And I, you know, and this is a knife that's £200 and probably plus. But it's a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. And this was the one of the ones that Tony, and it's only, I think it only has started in the year 2000 was the first time he'd done a, a Bose Select. So this one is from 2003. So it's got a right age to it. Now, look at that pocket knife. Swayback Jack. Not a swayback Jack. A dog leg Jack. <laughs> a dog leg Jack with a beautiful shield on it. It's that, I'm not sure what they call it. It's like a honey bone. The jigging is just stupendous on it. The fit and the finish of this knife is absolutely stunning. Look down there. There is nothing that is as good as any GEC I could bring out and show you. Right round to the termination and on the pen blade, they even come right round the bottom and up so that you didn't just have a gap there. The centering is absolutely perfect. Well, as near perfect as you're ever going to need to get. The blades, I'll, I'll start with a pen blade. Look at this beautiful, long, elegant pen blade. There's so many jobs that you can get done in a day with just that pen blade. You'll see on the back, this is a Tony Bowes. 
you've got it. It's in, not in uh, their Stay Sharp or their Carbon. This is an ATS-34, which they're not, the newer ones now are made in the American version of ATS-34, which is 154 cm. So it's a beautiful steel for a pocket knife and takes a razor edge. So you really have stepped up with the steel on these. Um, I think they're all 154cm now. The half stop is absolutely at right angles. Beautifully done. No blade wrap and that really tucks in there. It's a long pull on the main blade. This is a spear, but look at that spear. Is that not just stunning? Absolutely stunning. Beautiful swedge on it and it's on both sides. So the knife just looks absolutely stunning. Uh, nothing on the back of that tang. But that is a stunning knife. When you hold this, and I put my finger up in here, it is so well done that I don't feel that little sharp angle. And a lot of the knives that where they place them, where the, the it, it goes around the pivot, even when they're out a tiny little bit like this, they'll dig in your hands. I have no feeling of that. It sits lovely in the fat of my hand and it does not dig in. This whole knife is rounded off beautifully. It sits in. I could work for hours with this and have no hand fatigue or anything poking into me. It is amazing. I absolutely love it. And to pay that much money for it, do, do I regret paying it? I've only just got it yesterday, so I have no regrets whatsoever. But I can tell you already that I'm not going to be using this knife a lot. This to me is a, this is a custom. Without being a custom, without coming from Tony Bowes' hand, if I was to buy a Tony Bowes knife, handmade from him from start to finish, it would be over £2,000 for something like that. This cost me 200 a fraction, a tenth of the price of a custom, which you didn't get. Tony threw his books away about probably eight or nine years before he, he passed away there. He just didn't do them. He'd done what he wanted to do. He worked for Case and he worked for himself for friends or people who had been customers for years and made knives for them. But there was very few knives under £2,000 because that was the standard of his work. This is as close as I would ever get to it. And I am thrilled. And for Dave, I'll not go any more. If he does watch this video, I'm not even sure if Dave watches my videos. But I can't thank him enough because as much as I love my GECs, and I do, I love them no more than I love this knife. This is gorgeous. And I'm including my Northwoods, you know, on top of, you know, never mind the GECs, the Northwood versions. This is just equal to anything that I have from GEC or Northwoods. Equal to anything. Now, we don't hear that said too much on the on the internet. This knife is equal to... You see, I'm just not going to do I'm going to stop there with this. These two knives, I would, would gladly pay even a bit more than what they were sold for. Because their quality is so good. So good. The fact that they're the stainless, it doesn't hold an edge as long as 1095. So that's the only downside for these. But ATS 34, you're not going to get much better for a pocket knife. 154 cm equivalent. Um, I, I think 154 cm might just be a little bit tougher, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So I'll not even state it. But that's my journey with case knives. That's what I feel about them. Yes. When you get a bad one, you're upset and you're angry. But when you step back from it, what did you do? Did you do due diligence on where you got your knife from? And if you're watching YouTube channels, I think that's what you want from a reviewer to tell you. Because to just wipe a brand off because of a... Well, it's not just a few. It's quite a lot. I mean, they don't do themselves any favours. I believe they could cut down on their mistakes. But again, if you want a good pen knife, a pocket knife... An everyday man's pocket knife. Case are absolutely fantastic. Just check them either by eye, by hand, 
or trust the person you're buying from. Get pictures, do as much due diligence as you can. But when you get a good case knife, and I have eight of them, and they, they range right throughout the whole spectrum, which is great for a collector. I don't need many more. Now that I've got this, I, I'm just blown away. I mean, I'm not going to beat this unless I get another one. But case are not my main collectors. I do have custom knives and that's where this is going in to sit beside my custom knives because the quality is just so far beyond these two. It doesn't bear thinking about. And you'll not know until you get one in hand. You'll not know just how solid and perfectly made these are. And these are all made by the case tradesman. Tony Bowes just gave them a hand because this was his design of the knife. So I know that went on a wee bit long a bit, but, you know, I suppose I'm getting a bit tired. I'm not getting a bit tired because I joined in as well, so I'm not going to say I'm the innocent one. But when I found out the case did do some horror stories or did let them come through, I then changed my attitude to, I'm not buying one until I can see it. I can see pictures of it. I know the person I'm buying it from. I mean, I nearly bought that blind because I trusted the person I was buying from so much that I knew I wouldn't get a bad deal. But that's what takes time. And that's where you have to find them kind of people that you can trust. And when you do, you can buy great knives of probably any brand once you learn how to do it. There we go, Paddy's away, cup of tea time. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope it didn't go on too long, but I felt as if I wanted to get it out. There will, of course, be a full review on this beautiful, beautiful Tony Bowes knife. May he rest in peace and thank him for what he gave to the knife community. All the best now. Bye-bye.